Let's solve the advent of code 2021 day 22 puzzle using Go. I'd really like to use Ivy for this, but the input size is just a little too big to run quickly enough in the Ivy interpreter, so we're gonna use the Go compiler instead. In this puzzle, we have a 3D grid of switches and a set of instructions like these to flip various subcubes of switches. And there may be some fancy algorithm for building 3D ranges, but in the worst case, I think we're gonna to have to look at each grid cube anyway, so let's just use an array of switch states. Uh, so let's start. We're going to need a Go program. All right. And then we're going to watch what happens when the Go program runs. And we're going to have to start by reading the input. So let's do that. And the text is the string form. And we'll just print it. This is not the most robust program, but that's okay. We don't have to use it tomorrow. Uh, all right, that looks pretty good. Now we need to parse these lines. I don't really feel like writing a parser. So let's do something easy. Replace all the x equals, the y equals, and the z equals with empty strings. Replace on with one, replace off with zero, replace comma with space, replace dot dot with space, and then do r dot replace of the data. There we go. That's going to be a lot nicer to parse. In fact, I don't even feel like looping over lines, so let's just pull out the fields. That's great. So now let's parse those. We'll say just pull out seven fields at a time. And now we need to parse them into something. Let's define some data structures. We'll say a dimension is a min-max pair and a flip instruction is a flip that says on or off and then there's three dimensions of points and then the whole program is a sequence of flips so then we'll say we'll parse a flip we'll add it to the program all right so now we need to parse the flip we're going to have f dot on f dot p of zero dot min f dot p of zero dot max the same things for one and two one two one two those are the seven fields a to i of text of zero, a to i of text of one, and so on and so forth, two, three, four, five, six. All right, that should work. We need to write a to i. Again, not the most robust parser. Oh, we didn't print anything. Let's start printing the program. Printlin star f. Boop. All right, that actually looks reasonable. Let's double check. That looks good. All right. So now those negative numbers are going to be kind of annoying as indexes. So let's just add 50 to each of those. For now, we're only supposed to be looking at the small numbers, the ones that go from negative 50 to 50. So we'll just add offset to every one of these. All right, that looks good. And then these min-max pairs are closed intervals and that never really ends well in programs. So let's make them open intervals by adding one. And then we need to throw away these big numbers. So if fp0 min is less than zero, meaning it was less than negative 50 to begin with, or one min is less than zero, or two min is less than zero, or the maxes are out of range. The max, max is now 101 because we added 50 and then we added 1. Or fp1.max and 101. Or fp2.max and 101. Then we'll just continue. Great. That's the actual instructions. So now we just need to run them. Let's make our switches. We'll say it's an n by n by n byte uh, array. We need 101 for negative 50 to positive 50. And then we just say for x equals fp0 dot min, x is less than fp0 dot max, x plus plus, yz, 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 1, 2, 1, 2. Now we just need to flip the switches. Switch of x, y, z equals byte of f dot on. Oops. 
There we go. And now we need to total up the switches. So we'll say for each X, for each Y, for each Z, total plus equals into a switch of X, Y, Z. And then at the end, we'll just print the total. 474140. Supposed to have 590784. Oh, but this is a, they changed samples halfway through the puzzle. So let's try the second sample. 590784. That looks right. So let's try the input. 655005. All right, we got our star. On to part two. All right, in part two, as you could have guessed, now we have to deal with all these other big ones. And we're clearly not going to make a switch for that. But at the same time, I really don't want to do a you know, range tree or whatever it is you're supposed to do or could do. Um, so let's see, how big is this input? Um, the input is 420 lines. So there's only 420 times two is 840 different numbers that we're gonna see on any particular axis. And so that might be okay. If we can somehow narrow things down to just having a 840 by 840 by 840 switch, I think that's gonna be okay. Let's just double check. If we just do 850 here and we run it, that ran perfectly fast. So this is gonna be okay, I think. All right, so the offsets, let's figure out what the, the size is. Let's see um, here, shell. Suppose we, wow, echo min, um, let's say x equals tr on off xyz equals dot dot com. Let's just get rid of all the stuff we got rid of before and figure out what the min and max are. Boy, that failed badly. Hmm. Tr minus d. No. I don't know what I did there. Well, I'm failing at that. Oh well. Let's just figure out what the min and max are by looking at them. Let's see. All right, it looks like it's about 100,000. So let's say it's 100,000. And if we're wrong, we'll find out. All right, so that clearly would be too many switches, but so we need to remap to um, the smaller numbers. So what we really want is like one switch in our array to stand in for a large swath of a particular piece of the axis. And so um, we need to remap the coordinates somehow before we actually do the switch. So over here, we need to do some sort of remapping. And we can do it sort of in Go, maybe you would do like a map or a sorted list, but let's pretend we're using Ivy, even though we just failed before. And let's do a sort of Ivy-like answer here, but we'll take three, three by two times off ints, and we'll just put a one everywhere we saw a coordinate so that that's a place where the remapping is going to have to flip. And we'll just go through the program, and we'll say for I comma D equals range FP, remap of I of D dot min, one remap of i of d dot max equals one. So now remap of, of zero is set to one for all the different x coordinates we've seen. And so now we know that if we just, all the zeros in between, we wanna to map to the same square as, as some of those so that each square is like one representative range of coordinates. And so if we take a, a leading sum, which in Ivy we would be doing something like plus slash on the array to just sum up the ones and then switch to twos when you get to the next one and switch to threes when you get to the next, uh, but we're gonna do it in a go loop. We'll say t equals zero, j comma v equals range. Let's see, we're gonna remap of i, and then add to total, and then restore it. And I think that's it. So now, uh, the remapper is mapping individual pieces to um, you know, each number from zero to 200,000 to a particular number from zero to 850. And so each 
of these big slots is now mapped to uh, and this dense packing. So that's good. But now we need to figure out how many, how wide each one of these little representative switches is. So let's make some widths. Say width equals new three by n int. And then every time we see a t, we're just going to add to that. All right, width of i t, I think we want. There we go. Um, yes. A third name n for array length. Ah, yes, n. No, 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 not that one. Offset was supposed to be 100,000. That would not have worked very well. Still undeclared name n. Well, we should move it up. J is declared but not used. Hmm. There we go. Good error. All right, zero. Well, that's kind of cool. Um, how did that work at all? It's pretty amazing. Oh, we forgot to uh, stop throwing these away. That's the first problem. There we go. Now we get some panics. All right, good. So now we have to remap the actual instructions. So we'll say for each thing in the program, we'll say for each actual dimension, f dot p of i is going to be the dimension you get by remapping at i of d dot min and remapping at i of d dot max. All right. And now we got a very large number of squares, but it's not nearly as large as it should be because each square is actually standing in for width of zero of x times width of one of y times width of two of z. Let's see. Let me probably stop printing those. It's getting annoying. All right, that is a very big number. Let's see. I think we're probably back to sample two. Nope. There's another sample. Fine. Sample three. Oh, what? Sample three has numbers bigger than 100,000, even though the input doesn't. That's not cool. All right, there we go. Hey, that's the right answer. That's fantastic. All right, let's try the input. Let's see, that's a very big number. We got our stars, have a nice day.